Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our question of the day for January 13th, 2026. So here we've got a 22-year-old man coming into the clinic complaining of a cough and a sore throat for the past five days. He also endorses a low-grade fever and fatigue during this time. He has no significant past medical or surgical history. He lives in a college dormitory and says that a number of his friends have had similar symptoms. He takes no medications. Vitals are as shown. There is mild pharyngeal edema and bilateral vesicular breath sounds with no crackles or wheezes. Chest x-ray shows diffuse bilateral interstitial infiltrates. Sputum gram stain shows numerous leukocytes but no organisms. Which of the following is the best pharmacotherapy for this patient? A. Oseltamivir. B. Azithromycin. C. Amoxicillin clavulanate. D. Ceftriaxone azithromycin. E. Ceftriaxone amoxifloxacin. Or F. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. All right, so I'm going to give you a chance to pause here, and we will move on to our answer. Okay, so the answer is B, azithromycin. All right, so let's zoom out and look at our patient. We got a young guy, 22 years old. Already that matters. Age is often neglected when you're looking at test questions, but it can give us some big hints here. Young person is going to get young diseases uh, unless he's got something else going on, which he doesn't. He's no, got no significant past medical or surgical history. So he's coming in with a cough and a sore throat. Definitely want to ask how long it's been happening. All right, five days. That's telling you this is an acute process. This is, this is likely an infection. And in fact, we see he lives in a dorm. He's got friends who've had similar symptoms. Yes, this is some kind of infection going on, some kind of transmissible disease. Well, what kind? He's got a cough. So we need to be thinking of pneumonia. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to listen to his breath. We're going to uh, listen to his lungs, rather. We're going to get a chest x-ray. And yes, you can do a sputum gram stain. It's not commonly done, but it is something that may be given to you on your exam. So we listen to the lungs. No crackles or wheezes. Okay, that's odd, right? Pneumonia usually has wheezes and wet-sounding lungs, and usually in one area. Well, if you're not hearing abnormal lung sounds, but you got this patient, and he's got a cough, and he's tired, and has a hard time getting to class, and uh, or maybe doesn't want to go to work because he's just feeling cruddy, that right there should tip you off to something that often happens in young people, and that is called the walking pneumonia. Now, that's not the term we use in medicine, but that's the term you're going to hear used a lot uh, colloquially by doctors and patients. What this actually is called is mycoplasma pneumonia, which is a form of atypical pneumonia, along with others like Legionella. Okay, now you get this gram stain, it really just confirms what we already know. When you've got a patient who's got, who's, got a cough and is very sick, but doesn't have any abnormal breath sounds, and then you get the chest x-ray, and the chest x-ray shows diffuse infiltrates. That's mycoplasma pneumonia. You're done, okay? The sputum gram stain, optional. If it's given to you on your exams, what are you gonna see? Well, you're gonna see leukocytes, of course, because it's an infection, but you're not going to see organisms. Why do you not see organisms? Because mycoplasma, does not gram stain. It does not have a cell wall. Okay, if you don't have a cell wall, you're not going to hold the, the stain. And so you're not going to see any organisms. Are there organisms there? Sure, but you can't see them. So when you get a gram stain that says numerous leukocytes but no organisms, this is what you need to be thinking of, mycoplasma pneumonia. But you didn't need to do the sputum gram stain. It's just confirmatory in, in our question. And so at that point, all you need to know is the management for mycoplasma pneumonia, which is a macrolide. Azithromycin is the answer. Okay, now let's look at our wrong answer choices. Oseltamivir, what is that for? That's for influenza. Only within the first couple days of the onset of symptoms can you give that. So even if he did have influenza and you tested him and he was positive, after five days of symptoms, you wouldn't be able to give it anyway. Now remember, influenza presents abruptly. You're going to have high fevers, muscle pain, uh, headache, feeling sick, malaise. It does not come on with five days of mild symptoms and interstitial infiltrates. So the answer, uh, so A is wrong. Uh, amoxicillin clavulanate. That is a beta-lactam combined with a beta-lactamase inhibitor. 
And beta-lactam drugs like amoxicillin inhibit cell wall synthesis. Is that going to be effective here? No. Mycoplasma has no cell wall. Ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Is this a, a regimen given for pneumonia? Yes. For hospitalized patients with community-acquired pneumonia, these two drugs uh, are, are good uh, together. Would this cover mycoplasma pneumonia? Well, yeah, it's got azithromycin, but you don't need to give the ceftriaxone because this patient doesn't have community-acquired pneumonia. He has uh, atypical pneumonia, so ceftriaxone is overkill. What about ceftriaxone and moxifloxacin? This is also a really good regimen for community-acquired pneumonia. This is sort of throwing the kitchen sink. This is uh, a, a, a regimen that we would give to a critically ill patient in the ICU. So that's not the right answer. And then what about trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole? What do they do? How do they work? They're folate metabolism antagonists. They're given for a completely different pathogen. Pneumocystis girovecchiae. Okay, do we see that in young, healthy 22-year-olds? No. Pneumocystis pneumonia only occurs in immunocompromised patients. Now, the interesting thing is the chest x-ray will look very similar, but that, that's it. It ends there. You've got sick patients with a history usually of HIV or transplant. Their CD4 count is dropped. You'll know based on the history. So we would definitely not give Bactrim to this patient. So the answer is B. Here you have mycoplasma pneumonia, basically everything we talked about. All right, so remember the, your, your normal chest x-ray. So um, in a normal film, the lungs are predominantly black. Air is your friend here. It absorbs very little radiation, and you see these fine, delicate vascular markings uh, radiating outward from the hyla and then tapering as they move out to the periphery where it looks uh, fairly radiolucent. Everything is nice and orderly. You've got your sharp diaphragms. You can see the heart boundaries and so forth. Now, I have normal still over here. Here, you can see mycoplasma pneumonia, and here the rules change. Now, with mycoplasma pneumonia, it's different from lobar pneumonia. A mycoplasma pneumonia does not flood the alveoli with pus. It gets to the interstitium, the scaffolding of the lungs. So uh, the, the walls between the alveoli are going to be uh, hazy, and that's where you get these interstitial infiltrates, which, ha which have this sort of lacy pattern. You can kind of see all along here on the periphery of the lungs. Okay, very, very important to identify that. Now let's look at another one. Okay, so here you can see it again. See how nice and black and radiolucent the, uh, the normal chest x-ray is? And here, Again, you can see these, this just kind of hazy, lacy infiltrate that looks a lot like what you see radiating from, uh, from the uh, perihilar area in the normal chest x-ray, but you see it uh, going out further uh, in the, uh, it, with, with these infiltrates on the uh, mycoplasma pneumonia chest x-ray. Now, here's a lobar pneumonia. What do you, where's the big difference here? Right here. Here's your lobe. Okay, so with a lobar pneumonia, you have alveoli that are filled with exudate, and the air is displaced. So you'll have a single lobe or part of one that turns white, not just hazy, but white and dense. And you'll also lose the silhouette of the diaphragm if it's a lower lobe pneumonia, or in this case, which we see, uh, I believe this is an upper uh, lobe, uh, right upper right lobe pneumonia. Um, you can see that it does. Uh, somewhat obscure the uh, the right heart there. So it's a little bit harder to see that because the densities are the same. Sometimes you'll see air bronchograms, which is these sort of little dark uh, branching air-filled bronchi. I don't really see any here, uh, but you can look that up, okay? So there you have it. And uh, here's just a comparison of uh, atypical and lober pneumonia, which is the more common community-acquired pneumonia. If you enjoyed this video, definitely feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and I will see you tomorrow.